Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanseepa Norin. In today's bulletin, we will get you detailed news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Biden global strategy tackles China Russia domestic needs. Biden threatens consequences for Saudi Arabia after OPEC cut, but his options are limited. FDA clears updated COVID boosters for kids as young as 5. Michelle Obama Award will honor student memoir writers. World's first space tourist signs up for flight around moon. Burnt hair. Elon Musk sells 1 million worth of quirky new perfume. Former Google Ads boss launches Web3 search startup with backing from Coinbase top VC. Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear plant losses external power. Putin says Russia could increase gas supplies to Europe. NATO cautious to avoid war struggles with dual challenges. King Charles III to be crowned May 6 next year, Palace says. Four seventy-seven whales die in heartbreaking New Zealand stranding. Venezuela searches for missing after landslide, 43 dead. Pope urges unity as he marks Vatican's second 60th anniversary. Mahsa Amini protests 108 dead in Iran crackdown. Draymond Green fined but not suspended, said to rejoin team. And Tennis Australia keeps out of Djokovic's visa application. Now news in detail. The White House laid out a national security strategy Wednesday aimed at checking an ascendant China and a more assertive Russia even as it stressed that domestic investments are key to helping the U.S. compete in the critical decade ahead. The administration's first national security strategy, a document required by statute, stresses the need for a foreign policy that balances the interests of global allies with those of middle-class Americans. We understand that if the United States is to succeed abroad, we must invest in our innovation and industrial strength and build our resilience at home. The strategy states, likewise to advance shared prosperity domestically and to uphold the rights of all Americans, we must proactively shape the international order in line with our interests and values. In broad brush strokes, the strategy sketches a decisive moment for national security as President Joe Biden faces an arguably more complicated world than when he took office 21 months ago in the midst of the worst global pandemic in a century. At the same time, the White House said policymakers must avoid the temptation to view the world solely through a competitive lens and engage countries on their own terms. Biden came to office championing a foreign policy for the middle class that sought to put greater focus on China as a rising economic and military competitor, reinvigorate alliances that had frayed during the Trump administration and protect human rights, all while looking out for US interests, 
Administration officials say that the focus on U.S. interest remains central to Biden's foreign policy vision. But the new strategy document also reflects the long list of crises that has left the world facing shared challenges, including climate change, food insecurity, communicable diseases, and inflation. President Joe Biden said to his day there will be consequences for Saudi Arabia as the Riyadh-led OPEC Plus alliance moves to cut oil production and Democratic lawmakers call for a freeze on cooperation with the Saudis. Biden suggested he would soon take action as aides announced that the administration is re-evaluating its relationship with the kingdom in light of the oil production cut that White House officials say will help Another OPEC Plus member, Russia, paid its coffers as it continues its nearly eight-month war in Ukraine. Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut and Representative Ro Khanna of California introduced legislation that would immediately pause all U.S. arms sales to Saudi Arabia for one year. This pause would also halt sales of spare and repair parts, support services, and logistical support. But it remains to be seen how far Biden is willing to go in showing his displeasure with the Saudis, a vital but complicated ally in the Middle East. Biden came into office vowing to recalibrate the U.S. relationship because of Saudi Arabia's human rights record but then paid a visit to the kingdom earlier this year. Biden said in a CNN interview he would look to consult with Congress on the way forward but stopped short of endorsing the Democratic lawmaker's call to halt weapons sales. The U.S. on Wednesday authorized updated COVID-19 boosters for children as young as five, seeking to expand protection ahead of an expected winter wave. Tweaked boosters rolled out for Americans 12 and older last month, doses modified to target today's most common and contagious Omicron relative. While there wasn't a big rush, federal health officials are urging that people seek the extra protection ahead of holiday gatherings. Now, the Food and Drug Administration has given a green light for elementary school age kids to get the updated booster doses too. One made by Pfizer for 5 to 11 year olds and a version from rival Moderna for those as young as 6. There is one more step before parents can bring their kids in for the new shot. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which recommends how vaccines are used, must sign off. Americans may be tired of repeated calls to get boosted against COVID-19, but experts say the updated shots have an advantage. They contain half the recipe that targeted the original coronavirus strain and half protection against the dominant BA.4 and BA.5 Omicron versions. These combination or bivalent boosters are designed to broaden immune defenses so that people are better protected against serious illness whether they encounter an Omicron relative in the coming months or a different mutant that's more like the original virus. A literary honor will now carry the name of a uniquely successful author, the Michelle Obama Award for Memoir. On Wednesday, Penguin Random House announced the retitling of the prize in its decades-old Creative Writing Awards program, which also includes categories named for Amanda Gorman and Maya Angelou. Each year, the Obama Prize will provide a $10,000 college scholarship to a high school senior in public school based on an autobiographical English language composition. Obama's memoir, Becoming, was published in 2018 and has sold more than 17 million copies worldwide, by far the most popular book by a modern White House resident. The former First Lady's next book, The Light We Carry, comes out next month. The Creative Writing Awards program was established in 1993 and has given more than 2.8 million to public high school students. The awards are now co-administered with the grassroots organization we need diverse books. The world's first space tourist wants to go back. Only this time, he is signed up for a spin around the moon aboard Elon Musk's starship. For Dennis Tato, 82 years old, it's a chance to relieve the joy of his trip 
to the International Space Station. Now that he is retired with time on his hands, he isn't interested in hoping on a 10-minute flight to the edge of space or repeating what he did 21 years ago. Been there, done that. His week-long moonshot, its date to be determined and years in the future, will bring him within 125 miles of the lunar far side. He will have company, his wife, Akiko and 10 others willing to shell out big bucks for the ride. Tito won't say how much he is paying. His Russian station flight cost 20 million. The couple recognize there is a lot of testing and development is still ahead for Starship. A shiny bullet-shaped behemoth that's yet to even attempt to reach space. Tito is actually the second billionaire to make a Starship reservation for a flight around the moon. Japanese fashion tycoon Yusaku Maizua announced in 2018 he was buying an entire flight so he could take eight or so others with him, preferably artists. The two men both flew to the space station from Kazakhstan atop Russian rockets 20 years apart. The world's richest man, Elon Musk, has scented a new opportunity to capitalize on quirky products, launching a perfume called burnt hair that he said sold 10,000 bottles to earn a million dollars in just a few hours. With a name like mine, getting into the fragrance business was inevitable. Why did I even fight it for so long? Musk asked on Twitter, where he now describes himself as a perfume salesman. The essence of repugnant desire is the website description of his latest offering, which costs $100 a bottle and is set to start shipping in the first quarter of 2023, making good on a product Musk first touted in September. A top former Google executive wants to make searching the blockchain easier with his new startup, Sridhar Rameshwami, who led the internet giant's ad business from 2013 to 2018, has started a new company called NXYZ. The venture has officially launched Wednesday after attracting investment from several top investors, he told CNBC exclusively. Armed with a Rolodex of eminent Silicon Valley connections, Ramesh Fami secured $40 million in funding in May to establish NXYZ as a separate entity to Neva, a privacy-focused search engine he also owns. The round was led by Paradigm, a prolific crypto and Web3 dealmaker, while Coinbase, Sikiwaya and Greylock, where Rameshwami is a partner, also invested. Rameshwami will remain as Neva's CEO while he also leads NXYZ. NXYZ was conceived earlier this year by a team of engineers at Neva, a search engine that doesn't include any ads and blocks online tracking tools. Rameshwami built Neva in 2019 after leaving his role as senior vice president of Google's $150 billion ad business a year earlier, which he says was over disillusionment with its relentless focus on maintaining growth at the expense of users. Now it's time for global updates. Ukraine's biggest nuclear plant, which is surrounded by Russian troops, has lost all external power needed for vital safety systems for the second time in five days, the head of the UN's nuclear watchdog said Wednesday, calling it a deeply owing development. The warning from International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Grossi came amid a flurry of developments in Russia's war in Ukraine. Ukraine's military command said its forces recaptured five settlements in the southern Kherson region and Russia's main domestic security agency said eight people had been arrested in connection with the weakened Crimea Bridge blast. Grossi, who met with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday, said IAEA monitors at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Europe's largest nuclear power facility, reported the interruption in external power and said backup diesel generators were keeping nuclear safety and security equipment operational. This repeated loss of ZNPP's off-site power is a deeply owing development and it underlines the urgent need for a nuclear safety and security protection zone around the site, Grossi tweeted. Ukraine's state nuclear operator Energuatom said on the Telegram social media platform that a Russian missile attack 
on the substation Niprovska in the neighboring Dnipropetrovsk region to the north was damaged, leading to the shutdown of a key communication line to the plant, prompting the diesel generators to turn on automatically. Russian President Vladimir Putin said Wednesday that Moscow is ready to resume gas supplies to Europe via a link of the Germany-bound Nord Stream 2 pipeline under the Baltic Sea, an offer quickly rejected by Berlin. German officials have said Russia halted supplies through the Nord Stream 1 as a political gambit and questioned why supplies through Nord Stream 2 would be any more reliable. Natural gas powers factories, heats homes and generates electricity. And despite Russia's reductions, Europe has been able to bring its gas storage to 90% full for winter by securing other supplies. Natural gas prices have fallen markedly from August peaks but are still 80% higher than they were a year ago. Speaking at a Moscow Energy Forum, Putin again charged that the US was likely behind the explosions that ripped through both links of the Nord Stream 1 pipeline and one of the two links of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, causing a massive gas leak and taking them out of service. The US has previously rejected similar allegations by Putin. Several European governments said the undersea explosions that ripped through both Nord Stream pipelines were likely caused by sabotage but stopped short of assigning blame. The Russian leader has repeatedly taunted the West by raising the prospect of sending gas through Nord Stream 2, a political non-starter for the German government and others. NATO defense ministers met Wednesday as the alliance's member countries faced the twin challenges of struggling to make and supply weapons to Ukraine while protecting vital European infrastructure like pipelines or cables that Russia might want to sabotage in retaliation. In the almost eight months since President Vladimir Putin ordered his troops into Ukraine, the 30-nation military alliance has been treading a fine line as an organization providing only non-lethal support and defending its own territory to avoid being dragged into a wider war with the nuclear-armed Russia. Individual allies, though, continue to pour in weapons and ammunition, including armored vehicles and air defense or anti-tank systems. They are also training Ukrainian troops. Building on the lessons NATO has taught Ukraine's military instructors since Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. But as the Russian missile strikes across Ukraine this week demonstrated, this is not enough. NATO defense ministers were taking stock Wednesday of the supply effort so far and to debate ways to encourage the defense industry to ramp up production in short order. King Charles will be crowned at Westminster Abbey on May 6 in a ceremony that will embrace the past but look to the modern world after the 70-year reign of the late Queen Elizabeth. Twister's announcement from Buckingham Palace comes amid speculation that the coronation will be shorter and less extravagant than the three-hour ceremony that installed Elizabeth in 1953, in keeping with Charles' plans for a slimmed-down monarchy. While the palace provided few details, British media reported that the guest list would be paired to 2,000 from 8,000. Charles will be crowned in a solemn religious ceremony conducted by Justin Welby. The archbishop in Centurbury, the palace said in a statement, Camilla, the queen consort, will be crowned alongside her husband. The coronation will reflect the monarch's role today and look towards the future, while being rooted in long-standing traditions and pageantry. The palace said, Charles will be anointed with holy oil before receiving the orb, sceptre and coronation ring. Camilla will also be anointed with holy oil and crowned as was Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Some 477 pilot whales have died after stranding themselves on two remote New Zealand beaches over recent days, officials say. None of the stranded whales could be refloated and all either died naturally or were euthanized in a heartbreaking loss, said Darren Grover, the general manager of Project Jonah, a non-profit group which helps rescue whales. 
the whales bridge themselves on the Chatham Islands, which are home to about 600 people and located about 800 kilometers east of New Zealand's main islands. The Department of Conservation said 232 whales stranded themselves Friday at Tupuangi Beach and another 245 at Wehir Bay on Monday. The deaths come two weeks after about 200 pilot whales died in Australia after stranding themselves on a remote Tasmanian beach. Mass strandings of pilot whales are reasonably common in New Zealand, especially during the summer months. Scientists don't know exactly what causes the whales to strand, although it appears their location systems can get confused by gently sloping sandy beaches. Rescuers worked to clear rocks and mud from the streets of a north-central city in Venezuela on Tuesday, three days after it was hit by a massive and deadly landslide, and expanded their search for any bodies buried under the sludge. Officials raised the death toll from the slide in Las Tajerias to at least 43 and warned that it could go up further as bodies are found downstream from the hardest-hit neighborhoods. Crews extended their search perimeter to include that area, along a river located about a mile outside the city. At least 56 people were said to be missing, and some local residents have joined in the hunt for them. Officials said more than 300 homes, 15 businesses, and the school were destroyed in Las Tejerias, which is located along Venezuela's main industrial corridor. In a rare public appearance, President Nicolas Maduro visited the city and toured affected neighborhoods Monday. Pope Francis appealed for unity in the Catholic Church on Tuesday as he marked the 16th anniversary of the Second Vatican Council, lamenting the divisions that its modernizing reforms spawned as the work of the devil. Francis presided over a special evening mass to commemorate the opening of Vatican II, which brought the 2,000-year-old church into the modern era by allowing for masses in the vernacular rather than Latin and a greater emphasis on the role of ordinary faithful in the life of the church. Sixty years later, Vatican II still very much divides the faithful, with progressives seeing it as a break from the past and conservatives seeing it as fully in line with church tradition and chaving at the spirit of Vatican II, progressive read of it. The latest battleground has been over the pre-Vatican II Old Latin Mass, with traditionalists blasting France's decision to greatly restrict its celebration. Twisted Mass was celebrated in honor of Saint John XXIII, who convened the council and presided over its opening session, and his remarkably well-preserved remains inside a glass coffin were on view by the altar of St. Peter's Basilica. At least 108 people have been killed in Iran's crackdown on more than three weeks of nationwide protests sparked by the death of Masa Amini, said Oslo-based group Iran Human Rights. The Iranian security forces also killed at least another 93 people during separate clashes in the city of Zehdan, in the southeastern province of Sistan Baluchistan, IHR said in a statement. Protests erupted across Iran on September 16, when Amini died three days after falling into a coma following her arrest in Tehran by the morality police for an alleged breach of the Islamic Republic's strict dress code for women. Human rights groups also voiced alarm on Tuesday over the extent of the crackdown in Sanandaj, the capital of Amini's home province of Kurdistan in Iran's west. The international community must prevent further killings in Kurdistan by issuing an immediate response, IHR Director Mahmoud Amiri Mukaddam said in Wednesday's statement. The Oslo-based group said it had so far recorded 28 deaths in Mazandaran province, 14 in Kurdistan, 12 in both Jilan and West Azerbaijan, and 11 in Tehran province. It said the Iranian security forces had also arrested many children protesting on the streets and at schools in the past week. Now a look of today's sports stories.
Novak Djokovic won't get official support with lobbying from Tennis Australia should he seek to enter the country for the first major of 2023, a year after he was deported because he was not vaccinated for COVID-19. The 21-time Grand Slam champion wasn't allowed to defend his Australian Open title last January after a tumultuous 10-day legal saga that culminated with his visa being revoked on the eve of the tournament eventually owned by Rafael Nadal. Djokovic originally was granted an exemption to strict vaccination rules by two medical panels and Tennis Australia in order to play in the Australian Open. But after traveling to Melbourne, believing he had all his paperwork in order, the exemption was rejected by the Australian Border Force. Now let's have a look on today's weather chart. That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest updates. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all live TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jadu TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BT Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.